In this video, you're going to learn how to factor out a GCF in order to find zeros of a quadratic. Uh, looking at number 6, we have y equals 4x squared minus x. If we are finding zeros of a quadratic function, the first thing we do is set the equation equal to 0. Now, we have to list out all the factors of each term. So, I'm going to rewrite 4x squared as 4 times x times x minus x. I'm going to highlight the amount or the uh, factor, the greatest common factor from each term. So I have an x here, one x here, and one x here. And that's really all I can factor out. So therefore I'm going to write that greatest common factor in front. And what's left over is going to be what's left after I factor out the GCF, which essentially is dividing. So, what's left is 4x, and then if I factor out an x from an x, that doesn't mean it's, there's nothing there or zero there. There's actually a 1 there. We just don't write it because times things by 1 or multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, so it's unnecessary. So you factored out a GCF here, now you have two factors multiplying to a product of zero. And the only way you can have that happen is if one or both factors are zero. So we're going to assume and plan for that both of them are equal to zero. So first factor, x equals zero. And second factor, 4x minus 1 equals zero. Now the first one I don't have to solve because x is already by itself. The second one we do have to solve. So we're going to add one, add one. 4x equals 1, divide both sides by 4, and x equals 1 fourth. And those are your two zeros. If you want to check your answer, simply plug those back into the original function to see if you get a value of 0. For example, we're doing a check. If you do um, 0 equals 4 times 0 squared minus 0. So I've plugged in the first 0 into the equation. 0 squared is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 0 is 0. Therefore, that one works out. And the second one, you could do 0 equals 4 times 1 fourth squared minus 1 fourth. So, 1 fourth squared is going to be 1 16th. 4 times 1 16th is 4 16ths, or 1 fourth. And 1 fourth minus 1 fourth is 0, so this one also checks out. So if you just want to see if they're right without you know, having a teacher there next to you, you could always plug it back in to see if it equals 0. Let's try another one. Here. Number 11, y equals 3x squared minus 18x. First, set the equation equal to 0, finding zeros. And next, uh, see what the GCF is with both numbers. We have 3 and 18. 3 does go into 18, but it doesn't have to for it to you know, not to have GCF, but in this case it does. So we're going to rewrite everything in terms of factors. Minus, and 3 goes into 18 six times. So I'm going to write minus 3 times 6 times x. And I'm going to highlight the greatest common factor here of each term. So 3x here and 3x here. And whatever's left that's not in the highlighted part is going to be left over in the parentheses. So we have 3x and then x minus 6 has been left over. So I'll highlight that. That's where we got that from. 3x is our greatest common factor. That goes up front. So we've correctly factored it. So 3x equals 0. x minus 6 equals 0. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 0. Add 6, x equals 6. 
So we're able to set both these equal to zero because of the zero product property as stated before. One or both has to be equal to zero, so we assume that both are. We plan for that accordingly. We solve for x. And that's how you factor out a GCF. Uh, one more thing. If we have, for example, f of x equals 4x squared minus 7x. First set it equal to zero, of course. And then find common factors. But 4 and 7 don't have a common factor other than 1. So you're going to leave it just like that. And you can't factor anything out except for an x. And that's okay. You can only factor out the greatest common factor if it's you know, greater than 1, if it's there in the problem. If it's not, you can't force it to be there. So this factorization will look like this. x on the outside, and then 4x minus 7 on the inside. Because that's what's left over. And then you set each one equal to zero and you solve for x. But I just wanted to show you a GCF problem where the numbers don't actually have a GCF that's larger than one. So, find the greatest common factor, factor it out, and set each one equal to zero, and you'll find your zeros of your function. Of course, after you set the original function equal to zero.